the standard practice, which I'm sure you'll be familiar with, is that you go with uh, you go with uh, chinapo hot drink and cola nut. The issue of cola nut that I only speak indigenous language is not peculiar to Edo, but is very well appreciated, particularly when you visit a traditional ruler. Obaseki forgot those things. He put on his cap in the Obas Palace. No Bini man, no Edo man goes to the Obas Palace and put on wear his cap. It's part of our culture. You don't wear your cap. He did. Now, there were all those confusions there. Then your people started firing. Did they went home to bring those firearms? Or while you were going to visit the Oba, you carried talks to unleash violence. Now you're asking me, I have a track record. And I think no matter what happened, you know, sometimes this is the aspect in which I lament, you know, when people call me politician. I let protest against government as president of the NSC. Police sometimes shot and killed some of my supporters and followers. We never retaliated by asking anybody to kill anyone. In my last election in 2012, where I won all the 80 local government and defeated the Godfathers even in their ward, not one shot was fired. The election that brought in Obaseki while I was city governor, we did everything to ensure that there was no violence. What has changed that you are now referring to a dual violence? My campaign for one man, one vote was to dismantle and put out of business those who use bullets and raffles to conduct elections instead of ballot papers and PVCs. So I have a track record which I want to plead with you to play back. All the elections that were done under my leadership as governor, there was no violence. Now, before now, I had complained, and I'm sure it was in part of your news, where Obaseki said I should not come to Edo. If I come to Edo, I, uh, before I come to Edo, I must get permission. Now, that is all right. You can regulate whether I, I need visa or no visa. But what you cannot accept is that when I then decide to attend a burial ceremony of a member of the House of Rep, I saw the visuals in electronic channels arise and every other electronic where Obaseki mobilized people who are working with him, led by CSO, to the airport and they unleashed violence, they were doing both fire, and the commissioner okay. police told me not to land okay. because Obaseki has mobilized talks. Okay, what can Excellency. you, in all fairness, attribute to me? Wait, what can you attribute to me as Adams Oshomali? as someone who has ever, ever relied on Togri. But let me assure you, okay. we are not deceived. There will be massive voter, voter turnout because people want to kick out an MOU governor okay. and replace with one that will return us to IMAC. Okay. We said, don't believe them until you have seen it. Okay. So all this, one, yesterday he spoke, and Ruben, you are the most outstanding, and I'm not flattering you. You know my views about you. You know what we could have done together, but for political tea that I find myself in. I have a lot of respect for you. Watch the statement on China television last night. I'm not sure I saw it on a rise. The governor said, and played back, he said, I am the governor. Between me and my deputy, we are the only people, two persons in this state who have immunity. We can do anything. And now we show anybody that I am the governor. I will arrest anybody who do X, Y, okay. Z. Okay. He didn't say he will report to police, so he is above the law. Okay. Now, uh, when okay. the man says, and he went on, if they want violence, no, listen, if they want violence, we will give them violence. A leader don't talk like that. All he should say is that those march out of violence, I'm pleading with them, whether they are in my party or they are in another party, they should take it easy. Okay. Okay. We uh, don't okay. need blood. Okay, we need ballot and PVC on election day. Okay. When a leader on television okay. say we will give, and they were clapping. Okay, fire okay, fire. Your Excellency, I, I will have to, to, to come in here. Uh, enough said about violence. <clears throat> uh, we don't want violence in this election. In all of this, I have not heard too much about the Edo people. What is the need for the Edo people? What are you and uh, Pastor? coming to do for the Edo people that has not been done before? 
Well, I think this question is unfair. I am not seeking election. Okay, what, what is Pastor Eze Yamu going to do? Uh, wait, wait. Yeah, because you are indirectly trying to make me the issue. I'm not the issue. I have a right, like you have a right, though not, your, not through an institution of the media as a Nigerian, to have a preference. I have expressed my preference. Now, you should ask me what I think this person will do. To say what two of us will do is to mislead the public into thinking we are going to have two governors. There's only one governor. And we have, we have explained the, the gentleman, Pastor Ize Yamu, on his own, even without any consultation with anybody, and this is the truth, even me, I never saw, have any discussion with him, but he has lived in that state, and he has come up with what he called simple agenda. He has presented it by himself to the Edo public. He has explained to it what it represents, and he has spoken to how he will get it done. On the contrary, on the contrary, I also want you to play back Obaseki's speech during the day he flagged off. He said, I'm going to come out with my programs later. Now, gentlemen, do you launch campaign first? Before you tell the people what you will do later. He only say he will take a do, you make a do industrial hub, magical transformation without asking the question how. How is the most important thing Nigeria politicians must be compelled to address? Don't tell us you are going to create air condition on our federal highways and local highways without telling us how you are going to how you are going to get it done and how you are going to fund well, it. Comrade, let's play move. back, and this is important that Obaseki, as a city governor, launched his second-term campaign, and on that day, he said, I will later come out with my program. Which I should confess. Well, comrade, let's move beyond the So, Edo on the basis of, of uh, uh, the simple agenda of Pastor Ize Yamu, it answers the question that you are talking about. Well, and please, this election, I am not a candidate, and I'm not doing anything outside the ordinary. If somebody can come from Port Harcourt and, and support and endorse Obaseki, somebody can come from Delta and endorse Obaseki, somebody can come from uh, other parts of the states, or of, uh, in different states, from Sokoto and endorse Obaseki, without even saying what they will do. All they were talking that day was our Jubilee Godfather, our Jubilee Godfather. <laughs> now, none of them spoke to the issues that matters to the people, namely, Will you build more schools for our children? I'm very proud, uh, uh, my comrades on the, on the Arise. Before I became the governor of Edo State, Edo used to be notorious for exam cancellations in our work. So 30,000, 40,000 canceled. We changed those guys out of Edo State. Edo became a place where you, you pay and get the marks you want. By the time I left, from a position of about 26 on the ladder, we came down to three the third position in, uh, in uh, WAEC, and second position in NECO. Those shows that our investment in education was working. Pastor spoke at a forum that they will build more schools, more primary schools, more secondary schools, because well, the basis for upward mobility and sustainable development is skill acquisition. You cannot skill a man who does not have, who does not have basic education. So I believe that he understands what the challenges are. He lives in the state. He's not like Obaseki who came from Lagos to, be, to do what he did and he's going to go back to Lagos by the grace of God on uh, November 12th. Well, Comrade, two uh, quick reactions with his, from uh, our viewers. Which, in any case, as I know now, even that one collapsed. Comrade. He was bankrupt. Comrade, if I may uh, come in here. Two quick reactions from our viewers. Uh, someone uh, sent in a message saying, well, you can't say you know Ize Yamu based on what you were told about him. That he had been uh, chief of staff, he was also at the point SSG, and that he was the director of your director general of your campaign uh, during your second bid for office. And that that's not the person you will say you were relying on other people's comments to assess at that time. And that secondly, it's been a few weeks uh, since uh, you left office as a uh, chairman of the ruling party, the All Progressives Congress. When you look back now, are there things that you would have done differently?
I think what the what pastor wants to do, which he formulated, is not written for him. But if it is written for him, you will say, are you sure he believed in it? On my honor, I tell you, I did not consult, nor did he consult with me before he came out with his simple agenda. It is the product of his brain. Having lived in the state and having been part of APC and having worked with me before he left, he is familiar with the challenges. And he also knows he has no place to escape to. He, uh, Gobri can escape to Lagos and start uh, renew his, uh, his uh, stock broking if, if, if it is still going to try for him because he was already bankrupt by the time he left from the fact available to me now. So what is he needs to do for is a change. We will, Pastor has said he will return to reclaiming the moat. He will fight the erosion problem in Benin and the flooding problem in Benin and several other things that will make life different. Hello, comrade. Are you still with us? Hello, comrade. Yes, I addressed uh, two issues uh, in form of reactions by some of our viewers. The first was that uh, you said earlier on that you relied on people's opinion about uh, Pastor Ize Yamu in 2016. But one person said, look, as far back as uh, uh, the time you were running for your second term in office, he was director general of your campaign. And he had served as chief of staff and also as SSG uh, under your government, and that you couldn't claim that you were relying on other people's opinion. And secondly, it's been weeks since uh, you left as chairman of the uh, APC. Looking back now, uh, the person asked, are there things you could have done differently in terms of reaching compromise with some of the people uh, who were opposed to your chairmanship? Well, I have spoken to this in my five minutes acceptance of the decision to sack the NWC and of course, uh, uh, which of course put paid and uh, put an end to my chairmanship. I said, I have no regret whatsoever. You know, uh, at this one, one thing with Nigerians, the average Nigerians, including people like you who are not in politics, you want a strong leadership. You want things to be done differently. You don't want a situation where few people control our political destiny. Now, in try to democratize and return the party to the party members, then you have powerful forces, few in number, but access to resources. Who will resist that? Whether anybody appreciates it or not, between President Bohamaru Buhari and myself, we agreed that we must return APC to APC members. And that is why we introduce direct primaries. We produce a membership register. And of course, there were people who were opposed to direct primaries. As a compromise, and this is something I couldn't really speak to, people say, how can you have direct and indirect? Because at the end of the day, some governors say they want uh, indirect. And some of us, the president inclusive, say we want direct. That was why we did direct primaries for the presidency. Because in direct primaries, you can't bribe everybody. But with delegates, you can. So if I were going to return, assuming I was going to return to APC tomorrow as chairman, I will sustain some of those radical measures which some people were not happy about. I do not want a tenure that is not eventful. I want to drive changes. And the slogan of my party is change. If we thought this were perfect, why do we talk about change? We must continue to change the way you do things, continue to improve on them. There's what word Obama said. He said, something may not be perfect, but he just liked the word better. If there is any way you can do anything better, just try and do it better. Now, I do not regret the fact that I had the courage, along with my colleagues in the AWC, to disqualify a serving minister who publicly said arrogantly that he didn't do NYC. And that being a minister is a greater service to the nation than NYC. You know uh, uh, that NYC is obligatory. And to default in participating in it, you cannot hold such public office. I am also happy that a governor said to me, he is not going to do primaries. So we're in the Southwest. He's going to 
do its own primaries, even when the constitution of APC is so clear that only the National Week Committee can organize primaries. He went and did the whole primaries, announced it by himself. We did the whole primaries, and I insisted it's only the one we did in line with the Constitution of APC that will be upheld, regardless of the power behind the other guy. And of course, I'm aware that when you stand on powerful toes, of course, they will fight back. But I didn't want, I had no illusion that I was going to be a live chairman. No, no. The person who invited me to bid for that office was the president. And I thank him for the support he gave me and his standing firm. I mean, I thought, you know, as a very sad analyst, Ruben, that you will ask, why I am now in history as the only chairman who eight ward members out of 24 allegedly suspended me. <laughs> and that was the basis for removing someone who was elected in a convention of several thousand people. I decided I'm not contesting it because my understanding of loyalty, particularly when you hold office, office of trust, whatever has happened belongs to the past. And I can't do things differently. Some people say, you know, when you occupy this office, I've, just, I've seen some analysts say, Company ought to know that social -so people are powerful, uh, social -so governors are powerful. How can you do what? Are the laws made for the powerless? I do not understand it that way. In any case, from the age of 18, I have been fighting power. If power is abused, I ask God to give me the courage to confront power, possibly to defeat power when it is abused. But some people say, no, if you want to survive, you have to. Why do I want to survive just for survivor's sake? Even when I was earning a daily, I was a daily paid worker, I put the job on the line to fight for what I consider to be mm. unjust. Thank but you I don't want much. to discuss, and uh, there will be a day to discuss all of that. But Thank let you. me assure you, Thank you, I do not regret anything that we have done because you cannot change Nigeria without yeah. offending powerful people. Well, thank and you very you much, uh, Comrade Governor. Thank you very much indeed. More questions are still coming in from our viewers, but that's all we'll be able to.